Hey everybody. All right, so I'm going to break this down for you. I'm going to show you what I've created with this blueprint and uh, how it works and what it accomplishes. So, what it accomplishes, hit play here and get my mouse out of the way. So, what it accomplishes is now that you see the props the props spin at a minimum speed when the uh, when there's no input on the sticks. And then, uh, wow, <laughs> my screen capture, my screen capture seems to be really slowing down my frame rate. Uh, anyways, so you see the uh, the props spin at a minimum speed, and uh, if I increase the throttle, they spin faster. If I decrease the throttle, they spin slower. Um, and then there's a whole lot more to it in terms of like which props spin at any given time, uh, faster or slower. Uh, the way a quadcopter flies is that, let's say I want to bank to the right, the uh, left propellers, the left propeller should spin faster, the right ones should slow down to uh, create a bank. Then again, the opposite would be true, of course, over this way. So banking this way means that the, uh, the right ones speed up, left ones slow down. Um, then, you know, pitching backwards and forwards, it's, it's kind of the same deal. Uh, so pitching forwards, the back back props will speed up. In fact, this is easier to see. Let me let me demonstrate on the ground, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hold down on the on my um, left thumbstick so that it'll slow down the propellers. So now, if I slow down the propellers, you see um, I'll I'll bank left, and it's a little more obvious when I bank left that the uh, the right propellers spin faster. Then if I bank right you see that those the, these propellers spin faster. Um, and the, the throttle then, the throttle to, to, you know, to gain altitude, the throttle is basically a multiplier across all four rotors. So all four props um, spin faster based on the throttle. So throttle up, throttle down. And I've, of course, uh, added some motion blur um, to the props as well. Uh, but anyways, uh, so, so pitch, you know, pitch forward, Pitch backwards. You see, basically, you could t you could see how the quadcopter functions, and this is again, this is exactly how a quadcopter um, functions in real life. Um, so I was attempting to recreate that as well as I could. Anyways, um, so yeah, pitch forward, pitch back, bank left, bank right, and then um, of the multiplier for throttle. Oh, and then the one last thing. Um, so then to yaw right, you know, yaw basically yaw clockwise. And, and to yaw uh, counterclockwise, that, um, to achieve that, basically um, how, again, how a quadcopter functions, the, the props that are spinning right now, um, yawing uh, counterclockwise, the props that are spinning right now are the counterclockwise facing props. Those, those always spin counterclockwise. That's, uh, that, that's just the direction that they're meant to spin. And then the, uh, these props, now when I, when I do clockwise, those props spin in a clockwise motion. So if I want to yaw in a re in real, you know, with a real quadcopter, if I want to yaw, I if I if I yaw uh, clockwise, it's gonna just gonna speed up the clockwise uh, rotating props, and um, and that uh, that gives it the uh, the spin to, to in that direction. So anyways, so now I've got not all hooked up, and this and of course then the multiplier with the throttle. So now as I fly around. I know it's going to be simulating the the prop speeds at the right at the right uh, speeds, and um, of course there's multipliers. There's a lot of variables with multipliers. If I want to uh, if I want to create um, a different quadcopter, or if I want to just speed up its overall top speed, you know, or or the overall look of how the the things are spinning. Um, so that's that's possible as well. I you know I haven't really necessarily fine tuned or decided exactly what the uh, maximum prop speeds, uh, maximum or minimums or whatever. Um, but I do I do have it set up so that now I can. Um, it does have a minimum hover speed, and I've I've also set the minimum hover speed to be um, to basically be and just enough hover speed to maintain. Uh, I'm sorry, just enough. Upward velocity to maintain a hover. Um, if you let go of the stick, of course, I'm using the Xbox One 
uh, controller. So the Xbox the Xbox controllers are slightly different from uh, from a, a real quadcopter flight controller be, uh, based on the way that there's uh, springs. The spring in the in the Xbox controller keeps this. If you let go of the stick, it, it'll jump back into a neutral um, middle position. Um, a quadcopter controller, in most cases, is not going to have a spring in it. Um, at least not for the for the for the throttle. The throttle is definitely not going to have a spring in it. Where you know, if you want to, you know, throttle up, throttle down. If you leave the throttle at zero, it'll stay at zero. It won't spring back to fifty percent. So, um, so I basically had to um, kind of just come up with a way to compensate for that by um, by making the throttle the fifty percent throttle be uh, just the minimum velocity to hover. And then, uh, and then if you pull down on the stick, on the, the throttle stick, if you pull down on the throttle stick, it will slow down the props and, um, and lose upward, it'll lose upward velocity. So, okay, so that is the gist of what I've accomplished. Um, now I, I'll show you kind of a, a little bit of the blueprint so you can see um, how it's being accomplished. Let's see if I can, yeah, okay, cool. I can, uh, I can leave this playing as I kind of mouse around and show you this. So uh, this got to be um, pretty ridiculously complex. And what's going on here is, let me zoom in a bit. So I'll start with the, uh, the red. Uh, this is all my velocity controls. Here's all my see, velocity controls. So forward and backward momentum. That's you know when I'm uh, pitching forward and backwards. Um, so here I've got the input axes. Uh, the input axis here is is configured to be the uh, the right stick. Uh, y, uh, yes, yeah, the uh, right stick right, uh, Y. And um, so what that's going to do is this is the input. Input gets sent um, gets sent uh, way over over there for other reasons, but um, for for just the uh, purpose of the momentum, it is sent here to this multiplier. And then again, this is the speed multiplier. Tweaking this value, I may I may turn this into a variable at some point for custom custom quadcopters or you know tweaking the speeds. But this this variable here is what's going to determine. First of all, I put it negative because I want when you push forward on the stick, it should move the craft forward. So I needed to to put a negative in there uh, to make that happen. Uh, but then negative this number is just a multiplier, so it just depends on how fast I want the craft to be able to fly. Um, so then, in order to to tell it to tell it what's going on, I need to say, okay, what's the current orientation of the craft? Because it needs to fly forward according to the local space of of the craft. Um, and if you if you don't know the difference between local space and world space, maybe you're more of a beginner. Uh, definitely look that up. But I don't want to. I don't really have time to get into that. So uh, so it looks for the local space orientation and says, okay, well, which way is forward? In this, in its current orientation, which way is forward? And then it says, okay, take this, take this input, multiply it by this, and then, and then uh, multiply it by the forward vector. And then, and then here, this is what actually applies the, the velocity. And you'll notice that this is checked off. Add to current. So this adds adds the velocity to the current velocity. That way, it can maintain its inertia, and just either it either adds mo adds force, adds momentum, or or it doesn't. Um, based on how much input is coming in. Um, and then this, of course, the quadcopter, um, the target is the quadcopter, the, the, the craft. So uh, that is the, the forward momentum. A lot of the rest of this is, uh, is similar. Like this, uh, the, the roll, the pitch and the roll are almost identical. Um, so I, I don't need to necessarily go over that. The difference, of course, being that um, in, instead of getting the up vector, I'm sorry, the forward vector, Instead of getting the forward vector, you're getting the right vector. So, like strafing right. So basically, strafing right. If this is this input is positive and or negative based on which way the stick goes, it's either going to go right or or the opposite, which is left. So, um, bank bank right, bank left. Um, and this is this is the you know controlling the velocity of the craft, not actually controlling the the actual orientation uh, yet. So uh, then we go back to the throttle, and the throttle is a little trickier. Again, I had to add a few things to make it uh, behave well. Um, so 
here we go. Let's go through this. Okay, so here here we go. Throttle input. This 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 little evaluator right here. So it's saying, okay, is there any input? Um, is the throttle at zero? Is there any input from the stick? Uh, and then this decides um, if the throttle stick has input, then multiply sp by speed. If no input, then use minimum hover hover velocity. So this is kind of the new um, the new portion of of my throttle, where um, it says, okay, um, if okay, let's say there is stick input. Let's say I'm I'm actually um, attempting to add add or decrease throttle. Um, then if there's stick input, then go ahead and do this. And and then this is again another multiplier um, that could could change. I could put a variable there and decide to give it potentially more um, more throttle speed. You know, more more lift um, if I wanted to adjust that. But again, I'll, I'll fine tune that. Um, Possibly on a per craft um, scenario, because different quadcopters have different, uh, you know, depending on the power of the motors. This is basically the power of the motor. How fast can it go? Um, okay. Then, uh, so let's say if there is if there is input, it it goes up through here. Input comes here, and then um, and then it's going to come down here to clamp it. That way, this this basically clamps it to allow it to. Um, Keep it, keep it a cleaner, cleaner number that it's like okay, the maximum it could go is 200. So whatever the you know maximum of 200 velocity. Um, so again, so between this, this, this determines how how fast it can accelerate, and then um, this would be uh, the maximum uh, that it could be adding to the velocity. So um, and then again, this this part's the same. Which way, is, which way is it facing? Which way is up? So, so that way, which way is up? Because that's the direction I want to apply lift. Um, and then over here, this is uh, this is a variable I've created um, again just just recently for uh, in order to output some things um, for the uh, pro propeller spinning uh, scenario. So um, that's what that is for. Um, again, of course, the target is the quadcopter. Um, and this again is the same. Uh, so yeah, the real, the real, the real difference here is when I added in this select float scenario. So is there is the throttle at zero? Okay, so let's go back here. If if the throttle is at zero, then um, then it's gonna. This is no longer gonna be a true boolean. So it goes to B, um, and then B just doesn't it doesn't add anything. B is zero. So if B is zero, it basically neutralizes. Um, it neutralizes this value so that this this none of this even matters anymore. This is just zero. So then this is an addition node. So basically, if it's this plus this, one of these um, uh, actually isn't one of no. Uh, so actually, so th if this is now zero, this minimum hover velocity, which I have set to uh, to thirty two by the way, um, this this minimum hover velocity would probably need need to be changed. If I change the the mass, if I change the mass of the craft, if I make it a heavier craft, I would need to probably turn up the minimum hover velocity. So, so at, at the moment, the minimum hover velocity is 32. That is being added to whatever value comes out of here. So, um, so if this is zero, it's just 32, and it's just going to have an just the minimum hover velocity value coming through there, keeping it keeping it in the air. Um, However, of course, if there is input, then this no longer this value is no longer zero. This value is whatever the input value is, which then gets added to the uh, to the minimum hover velocity. This basically the minimum hover velocity. The way I've done it um, by adding to whatever the input is here. Basically, what this has done is this is shifted shifted by um, the scale. I, I suppose you'd say um, it's shifted the scale of my velocity so that it starts. This now starts at zero. Uh, I mean, or this is the new zero. The new zero is 32. Um, so if I let go of the stick, it will now um, it will now start at 32 instead of instead of zero. Uh, this is what I've done to to basically compensate for the the spring um, in the Xbox sticks, as opposed to the uh, as opposed to uh, a throttle stick that does not have a spring keeping it uh, in a neutral position. Okay. Anyways, um, so. Again, that's that's pretty much all about the velocity. I think I think we can move on to the uh, yaw, pitch, and roll controls. Now, here's where I had some craziness um, that I had to like kind of 
definitely beat my head against a wall and like I will end up waking up in the middle of the night. I, w I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, oh, wait, I think I have an idea on how to fix this. So um, first of all, I'll just follow this chain real quick. Pitch and roll, um, the values from pitch and roll, I needed those values over here anyway. So I just, I just dragged, um, I, I fed them into this little graph, but then I also fed them into this graph. I, I, I had originally just created two of these, um, two of these nodes, but I, I just decided that it would be a little cleaner if it was, if there was less duplicate nodes. So, um, so that means I have to drag those long lines out here. Uh, anyways, so, so now here again, similar, um, in, in principle, I, I'm using a similar technique that I, I had seen on somebody else's, um, somebody else's graph where it is, is there input? Um, if there is, you know, uh, here's the select over here. So if there is input A, otherwise choose B. So let's just, let's follow the chain of input. Let's say, okay, there is, let's say there is, this is pitch up here. Let's say there is pitch. There's some pitch input here. Okay, well, um, let's clamp it, first of all. So there's, um, there's input from the stick, and it is pitch forward or pitch back. Now, I've, uh, you can see here I've created minimum and maximum pitch values because uh, negative 90 and 90. So basically, I, want, I don't ever want it to be, be able to spin a full 360. I don't, if, I, if I yank on the pitch, I don't want it to just start doing flips. At some point, <laughs> I may try to add some functionality for doing flips because some quadcopters can't do that. But for the time being, I want to keep this pretty easy to steer and don't want it to flip over end over end. Um, so if you're going full blast and you yank on the, the you know the pitch stick uh, forwards or backwards, the most it should be able to to uh, to rotate would be negative 90 or 90. I mean that's that's pretty much balls out um, like the quadcopter is on its end flying as fast as it can go. Um, most quadcopters probably would never get that. I'll probably decrease this um, for for normal flying um, pretty soon. Okay, so um, so I'm clamping it to minimize the amount of rotation that can go, um, and um, I'm also outputting whatever the output is um, from this uh, is also uh, it's going to come in here, um, and then I, I'm I, this is the, this is the basically kind of the final pitch result, the final pitch. Um, math here and then that's going to output again to another variable that I'm going to use later for um, a different uh, for the propellers this is this is going to output for the propellers to spin them um, then uh, but then here 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 it comes in here it's going to select um, okay say we're following the chain here so we're choosing a because there is input so if we choose a then then it's going to output that value from a not from B because you know B is the other option. So anyway, so we choose A. It comes down here, and it applies. It, it applies to the pitch. Um, now this rotator, everything's coming into this rotator, just because. I mean, ultimately, this controls the orientation of the craft, and um, and it then it what it does is it applies those values to delta rotation. Delta rotation. Um, the difference being, um, it adds to the rotation, the current rotation of whatever. It, the rotation already currently is. So um, this I found that this is the best way to do it. So that way, um, it doesn't snap back to wherever you know. It doesn't snap to exactly where your um, your stick goes. It's going to uh, it's going to attempt to get to that rotation um, over time versus just jumping right to it. So, anyways, um, so delta rotation is pretty important, um, and then add actor local rotation. Um, so anyways, so pitch comes in here, uh, and that controls the pitch for the, for this whole orientation thing. And of course the role is going to be the same way. Now the really, the really tricky thing <laughs> that, um, took me a while to figure out was here. Now let's follow it the other direction. If, if you, if it comes in here, um, let's say this is says no, let's say no, there is no input. I'm not touching the stick. It's at zero. If there is no input, then, then it switches to, to, to this B. Now B, you know, you'll see it comes from pitch and roll. Pitch and roll, you know, it's going to, you know, pitch forward, pitch backward, you know, roll, roll left, roll right. It's, it's, you know, orienting the craft like that. Now the thing with a real quadcopter 
the thing with, let me just uh, scoot this over a little bit. The thing with a real quadcopter is that um, they, um, what they have is they have a way of uh, leveling themselves out. So when there is no stick input, use these nodes to level out the craft. And that's, that's what makes a quadcopter so, so, uh, so neat is that they have accelerometers and uh, the accelerometers will then uh, discover, okay, is, is the craft um, stable? Is the craft uh, upright and level? If the craft isn't level, make it level. Um, and then, so basically, you know, you, you add pitch and pitch and roll uh, multipliers, you know, when you're putting stick input. When you let go of the stick input, it says, okay, well, I'm not getting any input, so I better, I better level myself out. So anyways, um, okay, so here, um, of course, the target is the quadcopter. Now, um, what I've done here is I've said, okay, let me, let me get the, the rotation. Let me, let me look exactly what the orientation is in the world. Now, again, this is a world rotation, not, not local rotation. Um, this, this is my way, this is my accelerometer. This is my accelerometer. I say, okay, what is the current world rotation? Like, you know, is, is this level with the horizon or not? Um, then uh, I'm going to break that up. I'm going to break that up into pitch, yaw, and roll. Yaw is not really necessary. It's not really an issue because um, that's, uh, that's really not, not, not a problem. Um, so it's pitch and roll that I really need to, to level out the craft, right? So, uh, again, break it up. And I'll just follow one chain because obviously the other chain um, is going to be the same. But So pitch. Um, okay, so... So here's what I've done. Um, is is the orientation at zero? Um, if it's if if it's at zero, uh, if the orientation's at zero, then do nothing because um, it's 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 good to go. It's already leveled itself out. If the orientation uh, is not at zero, if this is a value other than zero, then go ahead and multiply by negative point one. Um, to uh, provide a rotation impulse that's opposite of the current rotation and diminish as it gets closer to zero. So basically, this this uh, multiplying by this negative point one, it's gonna it's gonna and, and again these values could change. I could I could tweak these values. The 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 negative fraction is important. The negative fraction is important so that it, it will diminish over time um, as it gets closer to zero. But what the number is specifically, 0.1 versus you know 0.01 or 0.5, you know any of those values, changing the number value would just change the speed at which it re returns to zero, the speed at which it uh, it, it will snap back to being uh, uh, leveling out the craft. So, anyways, uh, so I may I may adjust those, or again I may create a, a variable based on if I want like custom uh, things, because a lot of these fancy quadcopters you get these days. Um, do provide the ability to tweak these values so that it's it's not it's either the craft is more jerky like it jerks right back into position really fast, or the craft is um, it will more sometimes more smoothly return to a neutral value um, depending on what your preference is. If you want the craft to be more um, have more of a gentle motion, or if it's just critical that it's constantly trying to level itself um, as much as possible. Anyways, okay, so. Um, this is uh, something I was I was pretty proud of. It's it's a it's it's been working pretty great. Um, you see, in fact, let me just grab my stick again and show you guys. So um, so again here, if I if I if I bank and let go of the stick, it returns to level. If I bank and return to the, let go of the stick, it returns to level. Pitch roll. You notice as soon as I let go of the stick, it just it kind of goes back to a, a neutral hovering position. So um, that's that's something I've, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I was, it took me a while to figure out, but once I got it, definitely uh, made me happy. Just rotate and get a nice fun view. Okay, anyways, um, so back to the graph. Ah, oops. <laughs> I forgot that I had hooked up the mouse input as well. So let me land again. Uh, I, I have, at, the, at the moment, I've only really been hooking it up to the Xbox controller. Uh, I, I've got a couple of the inputs hooked up to, like, the mouse, but it's not really a priority for me because, uh, at least not at this point in time, because uh, it's not really a priority for me at this point in time because basically the, um, 
the quadcopter controls, in, in real life, the quadcopter controls are a dual stick uh, remote control. So it, it's the closest approximation to an actual quadcopter flight controller that I could, that I could find. Um, I may hook up the mouse controllers or, and or like, I, I think I'll probably do an Android controllers like thumb pads for the um, for the flight controls for the Android, but again, that's kind of down the work down the line. Uh, it's not really a priority at the moment. Um, so, anyways, um, okay, so that's the gist of it. It's you know this is what's gonna level the craft out um, if if I let go of the inputs. So um, then everything, of course, all funnels in here and gives it the add actor local rotation delta rotation. Uh, and then, of course, the yaw. The yaw is, you know, kind of you see way simpler. The yaw is way simpler because realistically, um, the way that the yaw works on these um, craft, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's just you just add rotation, and then you know, if you want to go turn the other way, you add rotation the other way. You know, it's just it's pretty straightforward. Of course, this multiplier is just in case I want to tweak, you know, how fast it can yaw. If you know, this is like okay, can I just yank on the control and spin 360 and like split second or does it spin a little bit more slowly and um, you know whatever. so those values of course would change based on what you're trying to do with it if you're trying to do uh, photography or whatever you want slower gentler motions if you're stunt flying of course you want it to be more responsive okay so um, now so the prop spin <laughs> this is what I was up until 4 a.m. last night um, spending most of my time on um, the minimum hover speed was part of it as well, but but uh, last night till 4 a.m. This is what was making my brain mush. So let me just start um, start at the you know top left here. Um, so throttle, the throttle is pretty straightforward again. Uh, throttle is pretty straightforward again, and. Um, it is just basically here's a multiplier, um, and then it's a. Uh, this time I did create a variable, and then it's outputting to a variable. Basically, I just decided to keep this cleaner. I wanted to just use a lot more variables. I've used a ton more variables in this than um, than I did in the rest of this chart, um, this graph. So, anyways, okay. So this is the input. This is the you know or you know it's the output from the throttle output. You know, um, the minimum hover velocity uh, is, see, it says out a current value 32. Um, that's really cool. I didn't actually know that you could mouse over things during play and actually see what the current value is. I, I'm really glad to discover that. Anyways, um, so current value is 32, meaning, meaning it's there is no stick input, and so it's at its minimum hover velocity. Um, so that, that value is coming out of the throttle that I created from that velocity um, graph. Um, that value is then coming into here and multiplying by this uh, throttle prop speed variable, which is basically determining, okay, well, if the throttle is at this, then how fast do I need to spin the props um, based, on, based on the math here? You know, multiplying the throttle speed times the um, whatever this variable is. Uh, then here, the uh, throttle prop spin variable, this variable then outputs way over here to this this out you know then it, this gets crazy I'll get to that in a minute so anyway I'm outputting this variable so that I can use it later to determine wh how fast each particular prop spins uh, okay so that was that um, okay here we go here's some craziness for you okay so figure out whether the pitch is forward or backward and then create a variable to spin the props at the appropriate speeds so basically um, here's my pitch output this again, this is that variable we created from that original, um, the original pitch, like determining the pitch. So depending on what the pitch is, you know, the current pitch. Um, in this case, I did, I flipped it negative one, um, and I, I could, this this drove me nuts for a while. I, I, I was like, why is it going backwards? It was like it was spinning the wrong props. It was spinning the props. Uh, it was spinning up the props it shouldn't, and it was spinning down the props it shouldn't. So I was like, what's going on? Then it occurred to me that I had put a negative into this uh, pitch output in the first place. So this this number was coming out negative already. I just needed to flip it. I needed to flip it so that it would be a positive value through here, and then and then become negative um, only for part of it down here. Um, but I mean, 
anyways, so anyways, so that I that had to I had to toss in this ne negative value um, just to get the 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 proper um, sequence of events. Anyways, uh, so pitch again, it's gonna bust into here. It's like it's it's another one of these things. In this case, it's is the pitch um, greater than zero? Basically, if it's greater than zero, what does that mean? Greater than zero means uh, I've applied stick input in a positive direction. So um, if it is greater than zero, then pick A. Of course, A then takes the the pitch input, um, whatever this you know pitch output. I'm sorry, the pitch output from that uh, from the earlier graph, and then it wires that into here, and then it outputs to this pitch forward variable. Um, this pitch forward variable then just goes directly across here. Um, again, I probably could have um, just connected right into these um, in some cases. Uh, I think part of I think I could probably clean this up and get rid of a few of these variables. Uh, but at the time, putting down more variables made it easier for me to uh, to read the graph. I think I think that's what helped my brainstorming process. So potentially, I could delete a few of these and just wire cer certain values directly into these um, these pieces. I believe, um, but we'll, I'll come back to that sometime, or not. <laughs> Anyways, um, so pitch forward variable, pitch forward variable, then um, breaks off into two things. If if I have a pitch uh, a pitch forward value here, if I have a value coming into pitch forward. That means I need to um, multiply by 10 for the increased pr rear prop speeds, right? So to pitch it forward, like I said, in a real quadcopter, to pitch forward, you have to increase the rear prop speeds and decrease the front prop speeds. So what I've got is I've got this variable here, um, which is basically just this value, the, the, the stick input coming in, multiplying by 10 for the for the rear props, and then here, this, this variable, um, so you can see current value, 0.3, um, oh, negative point three. Sorry. So, um, see what see what I've done here is similar to what I did earlier with the uh, the uh, trying to get something back to zero to level off the craft. Um, I just multiplied by negative point three, um, and then this variable you see is repeated. I've repeated it uh, multiple times. So, because this is what's going to um, this is good, what's going to decrease the prop speeds uh, for any of these. And I figured that's probably good to just make it a universal number, a, a, a universal variable that is uh, the same, um, consistent across all of them. Because you know, if if I need to decrease by a percentage, I might as well de decrease by the same percentage across all all the rotors. Okay. So, anyways, so this is a variable. It's currently set to negative point three. Um, uh, so again, pitch forward is going to increase the throw uh, the, the prop speeds on the rear. Um, decrease the prop speeds on the front, and then obviously um, pitch backward. If it follows the other chain, let's say if it follows the other chain. Um, so this is if it's greater than zero. If it has a positive input. If it's if it's less than zero, meaning there's a negative input on the stick, then it's going to go ahead and say, okay, well then follow this chain. This chain is then going to um, it's going to flip this negative. Um, it needs to have a, a negative value here so that. Um, so that when it uh, when it comes into here, basically I, I realized uh, this is one of the other things that I, that kind of freaked me out. I was like, I was trying to figure out why I was getting results that I didn't want, and then it occurred to me that um, the results I was getting implied there was something wrong with this chain, basically the bottom chain of each of these um, graphs. So this bottom chain, what it what it, what I finally uh, realized was that. I was getting some negatives here that I needed to flip to make a positive value here um, for this uh, to come out into this variable. Okay. Anyways, that is why I um, I did what I did here, putting the negative. So now the negative then um, come, feeds into this. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I think this actually is making it positive. So this negative multiplying by negative is now making it a positive value because I needed a positive value to to adjust these speeds. Because I do, need, I need a positive value to multiply by negative. Or I'm sorry, by ten. I need a positive value to multiply by ten to give it uh, more thrust, and then I need this to multiply by a negative to give it um, less thrust. So that is how that functions. Um, 
Then these variables, again, uh, I just pumped them into another variable so that this <laughs> crazy mess of noodles uh, could wire together. So this crazy mess of noodles here, all these variables, they're just basically applying um, applying what these are supposed to do. Um, now, of course, now you look at these. These are just for, okay, this is just affecting the prop speed for pitch. Um, and then this one's just for... Um, this one's just for roll, this one's just for yaw. So basically, all of those need to work together to keep it in the air and to keep it, um, to, to spin them at the appropriate speeds, but never never to, um, you know, shut them off completely unless, it, unless you want to just drop it um, like a rock. So anyways, so these all need, what, what I decided then was that in order for these to spin um, each propeller, okay, here's the propellers, there is the uh, rear left prop, you see here, rear left prop, rear front right prop, front left prop, rear right prop. So each of these need to spin at a certain speed um, based on the cumulative values of all these increases and decreases based on whether it's trying to bank roll, um, you know, pitch, and uh, so forth. So, um, <clears throat> Cumulative value. So here, I decided to split it up. Just it just seemed easier um, to read. Uh, it got way too crazy when I when I didn't have it, it broken up into increases and decreases. So I said, okay, you know what? I'll break it up. These are all the cumulative values that are are going to add up for increasing prop speeds. Now um, you'll see that the um, the throttle is going to go into each value. Um, the throttle is is over. It's an overall multiplier. Um, if you th if you push on the throttle, if you um, go up in throttle, it is going to affect all of these at, um, universally um, because that is what gives it lift. This gives it lift across all four propellers. Um, you see how, see how, when I mouse over that. Then um, now the counterclockwise props. Um, now if I go here, you see that it's applied. Um, just increase uh, again. Uh, it increases the um, counterclockwise props. So you see, this is now hooked up into these. So whenever this variable is active, it increases the um, the counterclockwise props. Now I can go across here. So again, increase counterclockwise prop speed. It's going to be um, the same at the same time. This is active. It's also going to be activating this one. So. Um, so here you see um, if uh, if this and this are both active, this is increasing prop speeds in the front, and then um, I'm sorry, uh, it, you know the counterclockwise, and then you know the clockwise. So um, the, if these two are active, these speed up, these speed down, um, but they're also still they're still also adding any throttle throttle input. So if there's still throttle input. These, you know, these, you know, these speed up, these speed down, but they're still adding the throttle variable as well. Um, so they may still be spinning pretty fast, just not quite as fast here, not or faster here, and not quite as fast here. So, and I think you guys get the gist of it. Basically, different different variables are going to pipe into these different spots and um, either either speed up the props or slow them down. Um, and then and then once once you get all those uh, outputs. These are the counterclockwise props, so of course I needed a negative value um, in order for the, you know, right before it gets to the propeller, I'm telling it, by the way, you're supposed to spin backwards. Um, so spin backwards here, negative one, uh, pipes into here, um, and then here, of course, there is no negative because these spin clockwise. So, so these just take these values, add up any increases, subtract any decreases, and then output the final results to the propeller. So that was a lot of talking. I know, uh, pretty intense. I know there's at least a couple people that were doing the same thing I am. I know uh, I saw on YouTube because, of course, me doing my research. I saw my own research. Uh, I found somebody else doing a quadcopter um, sim simulator scenario, and um, so I learned a little bit about uh, from that. But um, that particular person. Uh, didn't want to show everything, you know, uh, turning it into a into a profitable video game, I guess. So, uh, 
so this, um, I'm still having fun with this, and I'm pretty proud of it, so I decided I wanted to show it off. Um, and I still have a lot more work to do, obviously, on the, uh, the environment and the models, textures, and so forth. Um, but, you know, coming along, and uh, I'll keep cranking away at it. Um, and I just wanted uh, to share this, because I know there's at least a few people I've seen on the Unreal forums that were asking about exactly this, uh, this whole network, this scenario, for making a, fl a flying... Uh, flying game basically and in this case the, this flying game of course is different than the one the BP plane um, demo flight because this is a, a hovering game I mean there, it's a hovering uh, craft and it needs to have different inputs and in different um, directions and so forth um, it's not a, a, a thrust you know a thrust forward based game so anyways uh, hope you guys like this hope you guys uh, learned enough to uh, put something together if you uh, if you're interested in putting uh, something like this together it's been a lot of fun so far um, a couple late nights but uh, good times so hope you guys like this and I will see you around